They see John 3.16 as not part of the... That particular part where it says begotten has been taken out as a fabricated verse. And the proof of this, the proof of this, if you go to the Revised Standard Version authorised in 1952, and also if you go to the New Phillips International Bible, they're taking the word begotten out. No, they translated, the translated it differently. They translated it differently. Right, okay, right. That's why if you notice, in most in most translations, they use the word only son. Anyway, that's a side note, but I just thought I might want to just throw that in. But what I'm saying, right, is that the Bible clearly says that no one can suffer the iniquity of someone else. So what I don't understand, right, in your faith, and maybe you can throw some light on this, right, is that you have a clear verse, right, that says that you cannot suffer the iniquity of others, and then at the same time, Okay, let's get the Bible out. The way it says yeah, yeah, yeah. is that a human judge should not punish someone else for okay. someone else's sin. All right, let's, let's okay. get the Bible out. Here's the right, point. Okay. Here's the you should not punish the yeah, father true. for the son's sins. Sure. You should not punish the son for we'll the We'll get the Bible sins. out. Okay. It says that's what human judges should do. We'll okay. get the Bible out. Let the Bible speak but for this, itself. It does not say that a judge cannot take the punishment upon himself. No, no, sure. Okay. There is nothing that says that God cannot take the suffering that we deserve upon himself. Okay. A human judge, if his son comes before him in the court, can impose the sentence, the fine. And he can also pay that fine for his son or give the son the money to pay the fine with. Okay? There's nothing unjust about that. Okay? What would be unjust is if the, if it, if the judge said, you, my son has committed the crime, I'm going to punish someone else for it. That would be unjust. Okay, well, you know what? It's not unjust you know? when the judge takes the punishment upon himself. Okay. Okay. That is what right. God the Father has done. He has taken the punishment here's, upon here's, himself. Here's the thing. Okay. You know, you can you can hang your hat on on that one scripture. No, no, no. But, there's many. But, no, no. It's not but, just that. But, but here's the here's the thing, brother. You know, there's no other name given that, that 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 you can't call on any other name under heaven given to men to save anyone except the name of Jesus. Even my even in my Bible. It says anyone that calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Shall be saved from what? Shall be saved from what? Hold on, I'm trying to get my phone. Saved from? Sorry, bear with me. Side note question: uh, Did you were you um, born in Islam or were you born in, uh, into a Christian? No, I was born as, I was born as a Muslim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wonder whether you were maybe a river. No. Uh, let's go to Israel. Yeah, sorry. Right. Okay. So let's go to Israel. Okay, it says here, the son is a kill 18 verse 20, Thanks. right? Thanks. Right, anyway, it says here, 1820. Shall I read it or shall I wait till you guys? Okay. So this Ready? is God's instruction right, okay. to the judges of Israel, okay? Okay, right. It says here, the soul who shall, the soul who sins shall die. It's the right? one who will die, yeah. So, so from that, we're going to read further on, but it says the soul that sins, that soul is responsible for their own iniquity. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Yeah. So what do you understand? 
Okay, before okay, we continue, can, can, uh, before we continue, well, tell me what you understand just by reading that okay, verse. First of all, first of all, in this day, there was only atonement for sin once a year. Once a year through sacrifice. Going to the temple and sacrificing animals. True or not true? Does it mention sacrifice? Excuse me. True or not true? About when you're talking, I mean, you can't just insert this and think that it's a, a, a whole separate island no, 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 no. from the Bible, I'm not right? saying that. You, you no, can't no, no. separate I understand. It, so, no, no, so, I understand. So, I understand. So you're, you're in the middle of a conversation, so you can't yeah. you can't separate the, the dialogue of what's going on right here oh, right? and make it a mob. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, 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 okay, I haven't. Okay, okay, what okay. I'm saying to you, right? No, 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 let me answer your question. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I understand your question. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So right here, first of all, at the point that I want to make is that sin was only atoned for once a year. Now, if my brother sins, yeah. I am not responsible for his sin. Okay? Sure. That is his sin. He has to own that and carry the weight of his sin, right? In the middle. So if, if atonement happens right now, yeah. right? And all of our sins are forgiven through this sacrifice that's, that happens only once a year. Yeah. And then he sins the next day, the next moment. Yeah. That he's responsible for his own. Being his father, I am not responsible for his so sin. Hold on, hold on. Okay. And then, now, that's Old Testament, right? Jesus comes and steps on the scene. And then he says, I'm dying for everybody. Muslims, Greek, whoever. Everybody has an opportunity Where to have say that? John 3, 16. That Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, uh, uh, repent and repent for your, so your sins could be forgiven. I John mean, the, 3, 16 doesn't say that. John 3, 16, John 3, 16 says, 16, for so God loved, okay, hold on. For, for, so, I know so what God it says, bro, the world, for God so loved the world. Hold on one second. He it. sent his only begotten son. That whosoever Whether believes, believes in him, him how would they have an right. eternal life? Oh, hold on one second, hold on. How would they have it? You're conflating two issues here. No, and I'll sir, tell you what that sir, is, sir. right? I'm, not I'm talking about issue. how <laughs> is sins dealt with in the, in the eyes of God. Sins are dealt with in the eyes of God, according to this verse, is by repentance. Not, hold on one second. One second, hold yeah, on. Yeah. One second. What about sacrifice? Bear, bear with me. Bear with me. John 3.16 is talking about whoever believes in him. Right? We have no issues with this. Yeah. Because I know you believe in so Jesus. Go to Acts chapter 4. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Go to Acts chapter 4. I, I, I wanna... no, bro, because I'm trying to answer your question, but you're so hung up on thinking you're right here. And you're not. No, but I want to continue reading. No, but hold on one second. I just want to, I will go to Acts, but I just want to continue reading this for well, a second. Well, let's, let's deal with it. Let's go back and forth. Let me, let me disprove your theory on, on but what I haven't you just finished, said. But I haven't finished the theory yet. But you oh. mean I need to finish it when I show you Acts chapter 4. No, but four. if you allow me to finish, <laughs> allow me to finish, and then I promise I will go to this verse. Okay. Fair? Okay, right. I'll read on anyway. Or you can go, maybe he can help you yeah. go to that verse, that's, right? That's it. Right. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father shall suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Now, this is the key part here. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sins that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, right? he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his transgressions shall he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteous that he has done shall live. Awesome. So I what, love that. So, okay. I'm so glad you so, pointed so, that so, out, so, my friend. So what, what do you understand by that? That is no, true or not true. True or not true. What's not true? Do you believe? No, I'm asking you. True or not true? Right. You are such a Bible scholar. I'm not. I, I don't, love it. No, I don't no, 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 no. to be a Bible scholar. I think you are. I don't let, let me dun you with that. You're a Bible scholar. I'm not a Bible scholar. True, true or not true? The, the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the coming of Jesus. True or not true? It, it, it depends what what verse you are alluding to. This is one of them. How? Because the righteous. Let, let me read this. Can well, I read so, this? So, yeah, yeah. Where, where is it at? You're talking about 18. But if a wicked person turns away, now listen to this. Think yeah. of it seriously. I'm not. I'm not I'm being funny. Okay. Okay. Go on. Read it. But if a wicked person turns away from his sins that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die meaning his sins will not be imputed on him true or not true no it's saying no no no, no. if you ask god to forgive you hold on I'm, I'm 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 responding if you ask the creator to forgive you for your sins meaning a sacrifice is not i remember remember you said earlier in the conversation right? i'm going to remind you of something that you said you said earlier 
there was sometimes there was sacrifice of animals yeah. and yeah. For, and for the remission of I'm not yeah. denying that. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is that seeking forgiveness from God because Christians they say to the Muslims oh God will not forgive you because you're impure because of your sins however God here is saying I didn't say that I'm not saying you I said Christians say. some Christians say. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what Christians are saying I don't know what Christians are saying I don't know if that statement is true right. I've never heard it so I can't validate okay. that to be the truth okay okay, okay. so what I'm saying is that a blood sacrifice is not a necessity because we can see here from this sin, but it's not because God. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, because I see this guy speaking on your behalf. So I just want to finish what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you, right, is that a blood sacrifice, according to this verse, is not a necessity because God. Said if you turn away from your sins and you ask God to forgive you, God will not remember. So who am I, whose words am I going to take? His words. Here's or the God's thing. words. Here's the thing. That is a true statement. But what you're not, what, you're Would not you connecting that dot. You're not connecting the dots. Let me connect the dots for okay. you. What, what's now, the can I have the floor without being interrupted? I, I, go ahead. Yeah. I'm not interrupting. You. Okay. Here's the thing. The Old Testament was a, a type and shadow of what was to come. When we repent of our sins today, we don't need a blood sacrifice. There was only one, and the last sacrifice was Jesus Christ. That is the last sacrifice. Or was the last sacrifice? He is the Lamb of God, right? And so His sacrifice remitted our sins for anyone, for anyone that would ask for forgiveness. So this is true, especially today. It is true. So once I ask the Lord, forgive me of my sins, my sins are remitted. And then my part is not to turn back. That's what repent means. Change directions. Turn from your sin. Make a whole 180 and go in a whole nother direction. So once, so then that means I am now made the righteousness of Christ because of his blood. Right? I am I'm I'm I made just I'm justified because of his blood. So right. all of what you just read is true. Right. All of what you just read is true. So this is a type and shadow of what was to come. Right. So then you go to Acts chapter four, verse twelve. Okay, so Salvation yeah. is not is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Okay, so what sorry, what did you say? Acts four twelve. Okay. What does it say? Read it to me. Acts 4.12, 4, what does yours say? Uh, Acts 4.12. And what did you just have? Acts 4.24? Acts 4.12, you want Acts 4.12. Okay, no problem. Here it says, this is New International Version, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Hey brother, if um, Acts two thirty eight, Peter said, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, yeah. for the forgiveness of your sins." Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so here we are made the righteousness of Christ right. why? because so, of the blood of Jesus. Right. So, right. Now, you have a problem, and I'll tell you why. And I'm, I don't I, have a problem. Okay. I'll, right. I think you have a misunderstanding. Do, do, do you believe? that Jesus is part of the triune Godhead. I do. Right. This is where the problem lies, right? Because you believe that Jesus died for your sins, you are in essence saying that one third of God died on the cross. Because you believe that Jesus is part of the triune God. Even though the Bible clearly says in Psalms chapter 90, it says God is everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. Death cannot cease God, yeah. right? Do you, would you accept that? No. Okay. So, no. So, so what I want you to do, what I would like you to do, explain to me, right, that how can, number one, God die on the cross, right? How can God die on the cross? How can God call upon another God? Because remember, when Jesus was on the cross, what was his words or his final word? Eli, David said, Eli. David said, David said, you know, if my Lord says to his Lord, Bro, you're, you're, you're misaligning scripture, man. I'm not misaligning we can, anything. We can sit here all night long. No, I'm asking you a very specific question. When Jesus was on the cross, did he not say, Eli, Eli, Limada Sabatini. Yeah, my God, Psalm 22. Why do you have to me? Right. And at the end, he says, so, the last words of Psalm 22 as well. It's finished. Okay, right. okay. So, it. so it's the last word. So we have contradictory. We have contradictory. Psalm 22 ending. describes the crucifixion. Because one verse says that it's, end, it's, it's finished. The, another verse said that he gave up the spirit, and it was um, yes. sorry, and it was that. And then there was another verse where he said, "Eli, Eli, lemaza sabachthani," and he died. So we got three contradictory endings. How Jesus actually died. No, no, he didn't say that at That's the end. He didn't say that at the end. It wasn't said at the end. Okay. Did Jesus? He did quote Psalm 22. Right. Yeah. Did, 
Did he die? Psalm 22 prophesies his crucifixion. Okay. okay. Did, he, did he die after that? Jesus died sometime after that. Right. It wasn't immediately did at he, that point. Was there any words after that statement? Yes. What was it? Yeah, the other words which, he, which you mentioned, okay. That's not the last of words of Jesus, okay. There were words of Jesus on the cross, anyway. you're right. There are words of Jesus on the cross. Right. Psalm we have. We have. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. I'll wait till she finishes and then we'll get back to what we're saying. Yeah. So, sister, I want to ask you. Alright, let me read this too. Okay, read it. Yeah. But when Christ appeared, as high priest of the good things this is um Verse, just read verse 11 all the way to the end. All right. But when Christ appears as high priest of the good things that have come through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, not this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not by means of bloods and goats and calves, meaning not by the former animal sacrifice, right? But by means of his own blood, thus securing eternal redemption. For if the bloods of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons, uh, the ashes of heifer, sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead works and serve the living God? So right here is saying, so as I was saying, that Jesus is God? I don't, what? how does that prove that Jesus is God? I don't think you're really wanting to know how Jesus is God. No, I but, think, no, but yeah. I'm asking you because no, that, it's a genuine question I'm asking. I'm not, I'm not trying to like trick you or anything like that. No, I, I, I can't be tricked. No, you're, that's you're right. not tricking no, me. No, but I'm genuinely you. asking, show me an evidence where Jesus Christ, may the peace and blessing of God be upon him, show me one evidence where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Did he he doesn't use those exact words. He doesn't use those exact words. Does he say this? He, he, he does claim to be God. He does claim to be God and he does allow people to worship him. But he does not use those exact words. Let me keep reading. Does he say, I am not God, do not worship me. Sorry? That is a clear sign that he claimed to be God. He accepted worship. He accepted He accepted Thomas calling him my Lord and my God. Okay. Hold on, hold on one second. Well, well, I, mean, exactly. I can't have uh, so much people. Yeah. Sorry, I cannot have so much people jump in this conversation. We're just dealing with one person at a time, right? So, what I'm asking you, show me in the New Testament where Jesus says, "I am God," and then we can obviously contemplate on the verse. Right. Okay. So Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. Okay. Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. Who is the Good Shepherd according to the Bible? Sorry, I'm, I can't okay. speak to multiple people, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your friend tried to jump in, you're right, jumping let me read you in. This. Some people are okay, listen to this. For in him, him Jesus, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and all authority. In him also you were circumcised, but the circumcision not made by hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, yes. in which you are also raising him. So let me back up. For in him, yeah. the whole deity. The whole deity. The whole deity. So, so we're talking about the whole deity. So we're not talking about one third. We're talking about the fullness. The full deity the was full in him. The full deity okay, no dwells bodily. So here's your proof. So yeah. you can't say that, well, you're talking about one third of a God. Okay. All right. You're Virus. talking about the full Godhead. No problem. In one, but you, no, 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 no. Not one problem. Don't be so easily dismissive. You asked me to prove it to no, you. No, no, no. I'm going to respond to you. I'm not I dismissing just did. it. Okay. Would you like a response? Not yet. Give you another verse? Hold on. Let's deal with this one. No, 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 no. Let's deal with this one. No, 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 I'm not done. I'm not done. What is it? No, he wanted to read his whole version in his, in his, let me give him mine. We're not trying to win an argument. We're trying to present a Yeah, that's, that's right. Understood. Understood. What is it? Okay, so Mark 2, verse 5 to 6. You can open it in the Bible. Mark 2, verse 5 to 6. Okay, so... Sorry, can I just discuss the, the first verse that you, you dealt with? And then we can deal with the second one. Right, so you said the full deity... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, so you said the full deity was enclosed, enclosed in Jesus, is that correct? Yeah, right. that's what the Bible says. Right, so when he was on earth, was the full deity clothed in him according to that verse yeah he was fully god and, and man at no the same problem time. no problem when jesus was asked about the day of judgment 
He said, no one knows the hour. Nay, not even the son. The only person who knows the hour is who? The father alone. That's right. So according to that verse, it says the full de de deity was dwelling in him. Yeah. So how come Jesus did not know the day of judgment? Hold on one second. How come Jesus didn't know the day of judgment if the full deity was enclosed in him while he was on earth? Okay. So when Jesus stepped down into earth, so am I dealing with this guy? Okay. Yeah. So the only person God, when he takes on flesh... Wait, wait, one second. Do you know the answer to this? Or are you referring it to him? No, go ahead. Let him I'm referring to him. Okay, go on. Okay. Go ahead. So when the only present God, God is everywhere, that's what he believed, when he takes on flesh, he's going to deny some of his attributes. But it's not everywhere. So he denied some attributes of himself. No, no, okay, so, so, so one of them. Yes. You, you come here's, a, here's what I would say to your question. What's your response? He is a holy God at all times. He's fully God, fully man at the same time. Here's the thing, God is My so sister, fast. How did he not know the day of judgment if he's fully... Because he answered as a son, bro. When he walked, when he, he answered as a son, he died as the son of God. No, no. You said in that verse earlier... But he is fully he... God at the same time. Don't mistake. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We are trying to limit. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Come no, on. She, she already answered about the full deity, the ex explanation of, of Jesus Christ being God's Son and God Himself in the answer with the scripture where it says that the fullness of, of the deity dwell in bodily form. Okay. Now that's the answer right. she gave of, of that. I know. Okay. Listen, so then, how do you then respond yeah. to if yeah. the fullness of deity was in yeah. Jesus Christ? Yeah. On earth, fine, I have no issues with that because that's what your scripture says. However, however, when Jesus was asked about the day of judgment, I, so we, we, we can see evidently that the lack of deity was not present at that moment no, no, because clearly yeah, yeah. because clearly no, no, no. Jesus would have known that. That is not true. Listen, when Jesus was arrested like a human being, he said, he, Pilate said to him, he says, are you a king? He said, look, I can call a legion of angels if I wanted to. I have the power. You only have authority that my father had given you. He spoke as a son. So, so at the end of the day, he is fully God, fully man. No, no, at the same time, I think you're I, I, really no. just... You're dismissing the point. I'm not dismissing the and point. Maybe I'm, answering can't the answer question. That three. I'm answering the question. I'm fully confident in my answer. Okay. And that though he is both God and man at the same time. He said, I can call a legion of angels. I have the authority to call legions of angels right now if okay. I wanted to. But I'm going to die as a son. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to... I'm not... I'm, I, uh, yeah. I just want to share two verses with you. Go ahead. Okay? Is I'm, that okay? I'm all I have three I'm answers, by the way, to your question, okay? Just I have three start. answers to his question, don't worry. Sorry, yeah. there's so much people speaking. So, yeah. No, 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 well, come in, come in. It's her turn that, next. You know, it's just like, I can't speak to three yeah, people know, at the same time. Yeah, but I do have answers to your question. You, in case you, you really got to be respectful to the conversation. Go ahead. So just to answer, just listen to this. So this is this is John, chapter 10. This is what this is what happened to Jesus Christ. He said this. The Jewish people at the time started to wanted to stone Jesus, okay? And this is what we are not stoning you for any good work. Okay. They replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. This was Jesus Christ's response. I'm gonna go straight from this to another verse, okay? okay. And then you can respond. No Jesus answered them, it is not written. Is, sorry, is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Do not, do not, do, do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, Believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Just wait, I'll let you respond in a minute. Go to the, the verse I said about Mark 2. 
Mark yeah. chapter 2. So it's about Jesus healing so the, the paralytic man, okay? Yeah. But before he heals the paralytic man from his paralysis, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? So, so it's just the two parallels there yeah. that Jesus Christ was both on this earth as the Son of God but existed before he came here as, as part of the Godhead himself. I can show you many other verses to wait to, 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 to show you where it says this in the Bible. I, I can even go to John 1, 1 John 1. There's, there's so many places, even in the Old Testament. So uh, many Muslims will say, well, the New Testament's been changed. It's, it's not accurate. But even in the Jewish scriptures, you know, many Jews are coming to faith in Jesus Christ as the Messiah through one verse in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53, where it actually, it, the only person that's ever fulfilled the prophecy of the Messiah is Jesus Christ. Sure. So, Can I yeah. respond? Hold on, hold on. I want to respond to your point. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be too much for me yeah, to no, respond sure to. No. Right. You. So, right. So you mentioned about you mentioned John chapter ten verse thirty, where Jesus speaks about uh, the, 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 the whole chapter. Yeah, the whole chapter. We will discuss that. And he read a verse where Jesus forgave sins. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's discuss that. Right. Yeah, let's discuss that. Be Jesus said. Jesus yes. said in John chapter 5 verse 30 yeah. Jesus says I can of myself do nothing I judge as I hear but my judgment is honest because I'm not seeking my will but I'm seeking the one who said me therefore we've got clarification from Jesus' own mouth that, that he cannot come of himself do nothing I judge as I hear right so whatever so whatever Jesus so 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 so, 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 so whatever Jesus hears from God this is what he speaks right that's number one number two when it says that jesus forgave sins it wasn't jesus that was forgiving those sins because remember in john let me finish i was i was patient i did listen right? right so jesus right did not say i forgive you your sins no he says your sins have been forgiven right because this goes in alignment with John chapter 5 verse 30 where he says I can of myself do nothing I okay. judge as I hear yeah. also the disciples were able to forgive sins in John chapter 20 verse 22 did what was not the disciples able to forgive so, sins so it shows. Can, can, sure. before you turn uh, to that can, you, can I show you just one scripture and I want you well, to well, read well, this hold on now. hold on sister okay. let me let, let me read sure, sure. let me read this because obviously all right go ahead please. right Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not working independently. Okay, when Jesus says that He does nothing of Himself, He's saying, together with the Father and the Spirit, I do these things. Okay. Yeah, it says John twenty twenty two, and when He had said, hold on, He says, "Peace be with you." That's what Muslims say. Assalamu alaikum. Uh -huh. Right? So Jesus is actually a Muslim here. He says, Islam alaikum. He says, Islam alaikum. Right? Right. Are you laughing? Because you know it's true. Because you know it's true. Jewish people say the same. Yeah. Yeah, shalom, shalom, shalom. yeah they say shalom. shalom. And Jesus said, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So anyway, the Muslims anyway, pushed it from the wait, Jews and the Christians. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right. It says, Peace be with you. And the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he has said, when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins, yeah. ah, remember? Yeah. Right. It says, yeah. If you forgive sins of any, yeah. they are forgiven. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, going back to what you said earlier, that is not proof that Jesus can forgive sins. That doesn't mean that he is God because Jesus gave the disciples the authority to do what? Right. Forgive sins. Okay, so right, wait, hold on. Okay. Now so you how, can, how can Jesus give authority to forgive sins if he is not God? Because God gave him the authority to do it. Remember? He said, okay. remember, <laughs> Jesus said, all power was given to me from who? Who gave Jesus the authority? Okay. I'm answer there you go. Question. I'm That's your answer. Question for you. I want you to read this for us. I want, to go to wait, wait, I want to do John 10 30. I want to do John 10 30 because that was the last part she, she spoke about. Right? So your whole verse about Jesus forgiving sins is completely debunked because the disciples were able to forgive sins. And that doesn't mean you will Jesus never then claim you will never claim that they are God. No one will ever claim the disciples are God, but yet they had the authority. Because God gave Jesus the authority according to the Bible. Right, my last point is this. 
If we go to John chapter 10, as my sister over here mentioned John chapter 10, right? So, let's go to John chapter 10, verse 30. Uh, 30. I am the Father, I won. You're looking for that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, don't worry. I'm just trying to help you. Is that the verse you're looking no, for? No, it's fine. I, no, I know where it is. That's where I was going. Okay. Right, let's start from verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. Notice here, Jesus saying, My Father is greater than all, including Jesus himself. Right? He say including Jesus himself, but never mind. Carry on. Uh, okay, just a side note. John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus and my Father is greater than I. So that's a correction for you. Okay. Right. It says, I will give them eternal life, and they will perish. They will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. I and my Father are what? One. Okay. Now, the question is, right, what are their oneness in what? Are they oneness in essence or their oneness in purpose? Oneness in form or oneness in unity? Pardon? Oneness in form or oneness in unity? I would, I would say that they are one in oneness in purpose, not in physical unity. Because we know that if you believe that Jesus is Jesus and the Father are physical in unity, that means the Father died on the cross, and I'm sure you don't believe that. If you believe that, that makes you a heretic. Right? Anyway, let's continue. The Jews picked up stones. Did you notice, sorry, did you notice that Jesus gives them eternal life? Yeah, Jesus gives them eternal okay. life. Just like Jesus yeah. gives them eternal life. Yeah. Right, okay. Then you can yeah. Re yeah, refer. Because otherwise, we just end up not getting anywhere. Right. It says here, the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Right? Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? So Jesus is questioning their intent. Why are you stoning me? I've been among you. I've been doing all these wonderful things. What, why, what's the reason for this? The Jews replied. The Jews answered him, It is not for good works that we are to stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you, because a mere man, makest yourself God. Yeah. So now my question is this. Is this not an accusation? It's an accusation okay, so, so, to Jesus. Let me, let me answer. So it's really hot. I really want to go in the shade. Yeah, same, same. Let's I, move over here. Right I, here. I am so hot, you know, and I feel like I'm going to boil. I'm going to stay here. Alright. I have to move the camera, so I'm going to fail. Sorry, it's so hot. Jesus was often accused by the Jews of, um, of claiming to be God, of, of claiming to be the Son of God. And that's, that was the whole reason in the end why the Jewish people actually oh, crucified Jesus was because yeah. of blasphemy. You know, even, in the, even when he was arrested um, in, in, by Pontius Pilate, he was in that room and he was, he was asked, he, they, were, they told him, they said to him, um, come on, now is an opportunity for you to defend yourself. And actually, you, you can save yourself right now by saying that these accusations are not true. Hold on one second. Yeah, no, no, no okay. let me speak. Okay, go and he didn't ever defend himself. He didn't provide any justification. He didn't at that what, point. In this he, verse? No, no, no. In in, a, in in the chapter where Jesus was arrested for, for for these blasphemies that we're talking about right now. Right. So listen, in that in that time, he never once said that the things that they accused me of were not true. He never at what any point tried to defend himself. Let me let me just. But he did. But he does though. Sorry, I, I might have to correct you on this okay. because. Just pull up the verse where, where Jesus was arrested and questioned by. Pontius okay. Yeah. Pilate. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And we can bring that in. Oh, as well. sorry. It's just so much cooler. It's just. Psalms, doesn't he? To justify yeah, yeah Psalm 82. Oh, Psalm 82. Okay. Right, so basically, it yeah. says here, right, the Jews answer him, it's not for good works that we are going to stone you, yeah. but for blasphemy, because you, being a mere man, makes oh, yourself God. Yes. First of all, this is not a confirmation that Jesus is claiming to be God. This is an accusation against him. 
we cannot take the accusation of the hostile enemy, the people who don't like Jesus, the people who want to see Jesus fail, you're taking their testimony over your Lord and Saviour. That doesn't make any sense. I know. But, well, let me, but, okay. Hold on, let's continue. Because I can answer. I, can, I, 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 want, I, want, I want your yeah, response. Okay. I do, but I just want to read the Let's see how Jesus answered. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so Jesus wasn't mute at this point. He did actually provide a response. He says, Jesus answered them. It is not written in your law. I said that you are God. If you go to Psalm chapter 82, the Jews are called what? They are called God's children of the Most High. Right? So, just for your information, right? when someone is called God in the Old Testament, that doesn't mean or necessitate that they're actually God. Because we know that Moses is called Elohim. Are you aware of this? Sir? Moses is called Elohim. And Elohim is a word that is used by the Creator Himself in Genesis chapter 1. If we go to Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, it says, See, I shall make you an Elohim unto Pharaoh. So the word God translated here into Hebrew, into English, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that that person is actually God Almighty. Do you follow? Thank you. Can I bring another person? Yeah. Where okay. Jesus actually and I can see you bursting to say something. Yeah. Yeah. I am. No, look, this is the oh, thing. Okay. So, so, John, I, I mean, I could, we could dialogue all day. It's actually really interesting. It's interesting, yeah. I, 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 could, I, I don't want to bring too many scriptures in, but this is just one, okay? This was a response of Jesus Christ, okay? He said this, he said, let, if, let me read that a little bit earlier, because there's a whole story behind yeah. it. But Jesus oh, replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. Him. My father, who, who you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thoughts of seeing my day, as he saw it was it saw it and was glad. Okay, let, let me let me tell you this was what they responded with to Jesus. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said, very truly I say to you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. What does Jesus mean by that? What, who was he? If how could he exist before Abraham? Yet he claimed before Abraham was born, I am, which actually, if you look at the translation in the original Hebrew, okay, it actually means he was claiming to be God. That very word I am is the word for God. He, he, Jesus, I, make a, I could go to another verse where Jesus said that again, when they tried to kill him, he said, I, who, you, you, I who stand before you, I am he. He said it so many times, so. Shall we discuss that? Yes, yeah. let's discuss it. Okay, right. Give me the Hebrew word for the word I am. Genesis, uh, this is nothing new to you. Actually, no. Give me the Greek. Give me the Greek, and then give me the Hebrew. Greek is egoimi. Okay. I know that off the top of my head. Okay, before you find it, okay, hold on. Let's let's stop you there. Before you find it, let wait one second. I'm gonna respond. I'm gonna respond to you. I'm gonna respond to you. Because the only way he ever existed beforehand as another deity and another being, or he existed beforehand as God. So, so I want right. I want to know how you would answer that. Right. So, be interesting. Just because, just because someone existed before Abraham yes. or existed even at the beginning of the creation doesn't mean that they are God and I'll tell you why I'll tell you why if you look at Jeremiah right in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 right it states that when I created you I knew you in your mother's womb and I made you a prophet to the children of Israel so the fact that God knew a knew Jeremiah beforehand doesn't mean that Jeremiah is God. 
we we can hold on one second. We can exist in the knowledge of God, but that doesn't mean that you are God. That's number one. Number two, Melchizedek. Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter seven verse one. It says that he has no beginning of days, neither does he have end of life. Right? Melchizedek has no beginning, no end. Can we say that he is God? No. Right. Number three. If we go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, right? In the book of Proverbs, it says that the wisdom of God existed in the beginning of time. Does it mean that the wisdom of God is God? No. Right? So just because someone existed prior to the creation doesn't mean that they are God. Now, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 58. So I've given you evidences to demonstrate Right? That just because someone existed before the creation, it doesn't mean that they're the creator. Right. So now, hold, only hold on. Created, hold, hold on. Only God is there before hold on. Creation. One second. One second. Yeah. Only God is before creation. One second. One okay. second. It says here. Right. Let's, let's read this carefully. Right. It says, But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you but I know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. So it seems to me here that there's a prophecy that Abraham would rejoice to see Jesus' day in the future. Would you disagree with that? Okay, let's continue, let's continue, right? So we're talking about Jesus, uh, Abraham is rejoicing that one day that Jesus will come in the future. So in a way, it's just like a prophecy in a way, right? Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and he was glad. So yes. Abraham saw that Jesus would come in the future and he was glad. No problem. Abraham said God will provide. So the Jew yeah. hold on one second. Hold on one second. It says So the Jews said to him One second. It says So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? First of all, where in this sentence did Jesus claim to have seen Abraham in this sentence? Nowhere. Hold on one second. It said that Abraham will rejoice to see my day. He never said here that he, he's seen Abraham. That's a misunderstanding from the Jews. I'll read it again. It says, So the Jews said to him, You are not 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus never came to see Abraham. Never did. You can go all the way further up to 56 and 55, 54. He doesn't say that. So that was a lie that the Jews made against Jesus. But Jesus, was, that was an accusation again like John chapter 10 verse 30. Let's continue. It says, So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham? Question mark. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him but Jesus himself went out of the temple. Now, let's go to the Greek, because the only way we can solve... I've got the, I've got the Hebrew interlinear here, okay? So we can see the Hebrew. No problem. Okay, I am, the name of God, okay? Okay, good. Yeah. I'll bring up the Hebrew as well. Let, but let's go to the Greek, because Jesus... John, 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 Greek is saying wait, one second, one second. Yeah, I know, I'll stop my head Jesus wrote his... Up, okay? John wrote his go gospel in what language? Pardon? John wrote in Greek. John, right, right. okay. So if right, if I showed you elsewhere in the Bible that someone else said ego ema, would you claim? Would you say that they are God? Not necessarily, because ego emi means I am. There you go. Thank you very much. You say, I, am, I am a man. You know, I am. Right. Uh, six feet tall. I'm not really six feet tall. Thank you very much. Seven, actually. You, you're but, uh, actually proving you know, my point. Say, I am. You're actually proving my point. Itself, does not necessarily mean God. But when Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Clearly, that is not a normal construction of sentence, is it? Yes, it is, and I'll tell so you it's why. It's not a normal construction. Should of I prove sentence? it to you? Shall I prove it to you? Right. Let's, right let's, you want to go? Let's go there. Before right. Abraham was, Wait, hold on. I am. Hold on. hold on. In John chapter 9, verse 9, and we see a mistranslation. We see a mistranslation in the translation. Why do I say this? In John chapter 9, verse 9, the blind man, what, what was the response of the blind man to Jesus when he was healed? Actually, let's go there. Let's go there. It's not, that's not, you've got the wrong verse there. You've got the right chapter, the wrong verse. No, I haven't. John chapter 9, verse 9. John chapter 9, verse 9 says... What does it say? Um, some claimed that he was, others said, no, he only looks like him. And what was his but response? He, he himself insisted, I am the man. Right, stop yes. there. Yes. Ego am I, yeah. what, is it, what is it translated as? I am. 
So why have they put something else that he that wasn't there? They used the word man. Man is not translated as ego, a eh, man. No, that's right. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, it just in the, in the Greek, I think it just says ego, a me. It doesn't say the man. Right, good. Okay. The translators. Right. right. So why in John eight fifty eight did they not translate that word? As the same as in John chapter nine verse nine. Because it's not the same sentence. It in is. John chapter nine. In John chapter ten, it says, "Before Abraham was, I am." No, 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 no. You're misunderstanding me completely. It's not the same sentence. Ego am I? What does ego am I mean? It, well, in this case, it means I agree. Okay, it's just I am. He's agreeing with them that that it's that, that he is the man. Okay, he's agreeing no. with them that he is the blind man. He is the blind man who has been made to see. Okay? Right. So they ask him and he agrees, I am. Right, let me make I it, agree. do you know what? I'm going to make it, I'm gonna make it okay. easy for you. Right. I'm going to make it much more easy for you. Let's go to the, the, the Septuagint, the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament. What did the Septuagint say in, in Exodus 3.14? What did the Septuagint say? Ego me. And what else? Ego me. What else does it say? Ego me. It doesn't stop there. Give me the Greek of the Septuagint. Then we will see whether we, what we are saying is true or false. <laughs> Give me the Greek, give me the whole sentence, and then we will see. I don't know how that so good. Away. We're going to have to look it up for you, okay? Anyway, we'll go back to the system in a minute. But he kept coming in all the time, so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, uh, you know, um, Jesus is definitely used... He Wait, hold on one second. The title of God there. No, no, he doesn't. Saying, I'll tell you why he doesn't. Abraham was, I am. Right. Okay. Let, me, let me correct you, right? If we go to Exodus 3.14, right? Yeah. Because remember, John 8.58 is taken from Exodus 3.14, yeah. correct? Yeah. Right. If we go to Exodus 3.14, yeah. the Jews, they said, right, when I go to the children of Israel, who should I say sent me? Yeah. Right? Does he not say that? What was the response of God in the Greek lexicon, in the Greek Septuagint of the Old Testament? What was the response of God in the Greek? I don't have to have the right, Septuagint here. I will tell you. I've got the Hebrew, I haven't got the Greek. I, okay. I will tell you both. Okay. I will tell you both. Right. In the Greek, in the Greek, it is ego, a my, hold on. Hold on is the manifestation of God. Hold on is the being. That's why, if you notice in the translators, they translate it as I am the being, right? But when we go to X, when we go to John 8, 58, when Jesus says before Abraham was I am, we can safely translate that as I am the one that's been spoken about. That's how it's been translated. It's not translated in a deity form, like what he's saying. That's a mistranslation. In fact, that's why in other translations, they, they, it actually says, I am the being that's been spoken about. It doesn't just say, I am. And that's the reason why in John chapter 9, verse 9, if you notice, it's translated differently in John 8, 58, even though the same Greek but word is used. But it's interesting that you say that, because so, I, I mean, it's, no, it's good, it's a good, good, good um, response. But what, what was spoken about Jesus, then I would ask you, is, is what was spoken about him before? That's the question, because if you read even, I don't know if you've ever read the Bible, I know you know a lot of scriptures, but if you can look back even in the Old Testament, there's so much that indicate the coming of Jesus Christ on the earth. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, but it, it indicates that he would come as the Messiah that would save the people from their sin. That's what, that's what, so even if that is translated in that way. Now, many scholars, many, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a biblical scholar, no, okay? But many biblical scholars would even disagree with that and actually would, can prove, I can't, but can prove that he is saying he is God. But even if he's so, not. From, from where? From, from what you've just shared. But let me, but I, I went, that's the reason yeah. why I went into the language. Yeah, but I can't defend that because I'm not a scholar. But what I can Fine. say is this. So we should is leave that. it at we should. Yeah, okay, well, let's just leave it at that. Okay. But what I would say is this is what was spoken of Jesus. Wait, we're, we're in a discussion. What was spoken of Jesus? What was, was he spoken about as a prophet that would come with a message from the Most High? Yeah. Or was he spoken of as the Messiah that would, would save the people from their sins? Right. Now, I would argue, and we could sit here in Starbucks all day and talk these things. I'm, I'm telling you, we could, and I would love to do that, actually. But, you know, what was spoken, I would say he was spoken of as the one that would come and save the people from their sins. Now, I'm not going to go into another verse right now. Go ahead and I'll respond to you. Go ahead, go ahead. And I really, really, really need 
Nate, nature is calling. But Fine. read John 1, okay? It all talks about how God would become flesh and make his dwelling on the earth. For me to, if you want to go into that. Go ahead, go for it. Okay. Go for it. John 1, okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Even that itself is fathomable. Now, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay? He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe yeah. he himself was not the light he came only as a witness to the true light the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world he was in the world and through and though the world was made through him the world didn't recognize him he came to, to which was his own but his own did not receive him yet to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Listen, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So what is we, have, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I would say so what Jesus. that means is that God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. This is so many other verses I could use okay, so let's to, deal with this. to back that up as well. Okay, yeah. so let's deal with this, right? So, John 1.1 1, 1 is in complete contradiction to John 17 verse 3, right? And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. But let's, let's first discuss John 1.1, 1, 1, right? It says, in the beginning was the Word, right? In the beginning was the word. And the word is supposed to be who? Jesus, right? Yes. Oh, the Greek word used here is logos, right? Logos has multiple meanings, right? In fact, the word logos, you cannot translate logos as Jesus. You just, I'm, hold on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, no, hold on one second. Hold on. I was just going to say, hear me out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, so my question then, as you're answering, is this is, what word became flesh? No, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm just okay. not responding. I'm talking about from a lexical meaning, from a Greek lexical meaning. If you go to the Greek lexicon, yeah. right, you cannot translate logos as Jesus because there is no lexical meaning using the term logos to demonstrate Jesus. Logos can have multiple meanings and I'm sure he would actually bear witness to that. Right. But however, in the context of John 1.1, 1, 1, we can safely say it's translated as Jesus, even though from a lexical meaning, it doesn't carry that meaning. But for argument's sake, let's go with that, right? So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Again, there's an issue here, because you're saying that Jesus was with God, and that actually makes two gods. That makes two gods, I'm sorry. But it's no, there. No, hold on one second. Right? One it's second. There, right? This is in complete violation of wow. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse well, 4. No, hold on one second. I was patient. Let it, let it, hold on one second. One second. One second. One second. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So that's two gods there. And in fact, Eusebius, a Christian scholar, right, actually mentions oh, this. Oh, I love this. It's so good. Come right. On. Eusebius <laughs> mentions that he, he mentions John else. okay you can you can do that right, keep, keep right. if we look, are you familiar with Christian scholarship I do you know what I'm I am I, I mean I won't tell you my whole story but I became a Christian six years ago so okay you know um, yeah that's all you need to know right now right <laughs> if we look at okay let's look at what Christian scholars say about John 1 1 right let's look at Reverend Tom Herper Reverend Tom Herper is a Christian scholar yes. right and he completely agrees that John 1.1 1, 1 is talking about a duality. You see, this is also of the opinion that John 1.1 1, 1 is talking about a duality. In fact, you see, this even mentions that John 1.1 1, 1 is a com complete violation of the Shema. Do you know what the Shema is? Right. If we recite the Shema in Hebrew, it states, it's a Shema Israel Adonai Lohinu Adonai Echad. Right? Here are Israel. Fine. Here at Israel, the Lord our God is one. The word echad. What does that 
word mean? What the translation of one? It means unity. Because I have I have a I have a scripture to validate what she just said. May I please? May I please? Yes, please. John 17, 22. He says, this is Jesus right before he ascended. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. I have given them the glory, them being the people that follow. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity. And you said you, you, you just, you tried to debunk the unity part, right? When, when we was over there and you were talking no, about no, unity. No, 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 that, that verse agrees with me. Yeah. Yes. Can you continue with what you were saying? Yeah, no, 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 because I'm going, we're getting somewhere. Come on, keep going. Right. Yeah. What I'm saying is that, hold on, I want to get back to that John 17, right? But what I'm saying, right, is that in John... So, the, what you're saying is like a blasphemy, a blasphemy because it talks of there being more than one God. Absolutely. Okay. And that contradicts, that contradicts so many passages of the Bible, right? But it doesn't contradict, oh, oh. and I can show why. I'll tell you why okay, it does. Okay. I tell you why it's okay. in conf conflict with so many verses. Yeah. It's in conflict with Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four, yeah. where it speaks about God being one. Yes. It contradicts yes. Mark chapter twelve, verse twenty-nine, okay. where Jesus says, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord yeah. our God is one Lord." Yeah. It contradicts Isaiah chapter forty-five, where where God is pronounced as He says, "God is above on earth and beneath there is no other God." So God is described as no. There's no being on earth that could be God. This is what the Isaiah says. You, you, I'm sure you wouldn't disagree with what Isaiah Lord, says. It is, it, I agree with you that God is way above our ways, way above our thoughts, all of that. I, I, I just agree. want to just finish responding yeah, to please, you. Hold yeah. on one second. Right. Please. So John 1.1, 1, 1, according to Christian scholarship, is, is in conflict with the Bible. And I've mentioned Eusebius, and I've mentioned Reverend Tom Herper. And I can keep going on if I wish. Hold on one second. Also, also, it doesn't speak about the oneness of God, it speaks about a duality. And I'm sure you're not a polytheist. As Christians, you're supposed to be a monotheist. You're supposed to believe that God is one, not a duality, right? So if you believe that God is a polytheist, that God is two in one or three in one, there's a problem, right? That, no, hold on one second, hold on one second, one second. Thirdly, thirdly, John 1.1 1, 1 doesn't include the Holy Spirit. It only talks about a duality, right? right? So the question is, where's the Holy Spirit in this? Oh, now that's what? another, that's another wait, wait, conversation. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Right? Right? There's, there's no mention, there's no mention of the Holy Spirit here. We only see the Father. Absolutely, no, I'm here for the same reason. I'm not here to argue neither. We're here to seek the truth, right? And the truth shall set you free. Yes. Right? Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. So, right. So basically, what I'm saying here, right, is that Jesus clearly. Okay, let's. So, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word's with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, right? So now, it's funny, right? Because in the Bible, it clearly says that God cannot be a man. In Numbers chapter 23, let me finish, let me finish, I will, I, I will show you, I will show you. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God, I know what it says. He should lie. It does not say God cannot become a man. Should I show you another verse in Hosea? It doesn't say God cannot become a man. It says, God, I am not a man, I should lie. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. Because you're saying something that the Bible doesn't say. You're saying Numbers 23 says God cannot become a man. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. Right. My favorite verse of Muslim apologists saying God cannot become a man, but it does not say that. Thank you for your contribution. Right, yeah, anyway. Yeah, anyway. Right, there's two verses, right? There's two verses. A clear verse in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, it says God is not a man. It's clear there and that. And yes, there's God numbers. Not a man that he should lie. No, it's not a man that he should change his mind. Hold on. That's okay. So God is not like us. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We are lying. Hold on. We change our mind. Hold on. God is not hold like on. us. Hold on. He's not a man I'm, like I'm us. talking about. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes. I agree with you. But that's yes. Numbers 23, verse 19. Yes. I pointed towards another verse where it clearly says God is not a man. But anyway, anyway. Yes. Right. Let's continue. Yes, let's right. continue. Come on. In John chapter 17, yeah. verse 3. Now, this is an absolute evidence, empirical evidence. 
that debunks the Trinity and debunks John chapter 1 verse 1, right? In John 17 verse 3 it says, and this is life eternal, that they may know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So my question to you is this, because you're taking John 1.1 1, 1 as the evidence that Jesus is God, right or wrong? No, I know, and not only, I know that's one out of many. That's one side of the coin, right? According to John 17 verse 3, who does Jesus identify as the only true God in this in this verse? Elohim, God. Case closed. Yeah. Okay. So if so hold on one second. If the if if Jesus admits from his own testimony that the Father is the only true God. Yes. Right? The Father is the only true God. Then so how is Jesus God, God as well? Spirit is the only true God. Yeah, but okay, listen, Ella, and okay, I talk to Muslim brothers and sisters all the time. Okay. okay? okay. And it's this, it's this. You, it, it's not, it's not case closed, okay? Because Jesus has already said on so many occasions throughout that he, referring to who the, who, in his relationship with the Father, how the Father sent him, you know, like, so it's not case closed, okay? Because we can continue this discussion using so many other Bible verses. But let me let me come to Genesis one, where God created the earth. I don't know whether you know about this verse. Okay, I want I want, I want your opinion on this. Okay, Genesis one verse twenty six says this. Let us make man then God, in our Yeah. Okay. You know you're a, you you you're experienced at this, right? He does this all the time. Okay. This is my first time here. Okay. Let, then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, yeah. over all the creatures that move on, uh, along the ground. That us, let us make man in our image. Again, it's actually coming back to what you said where we say that this um, the two gods, the two gods thing that you've come to before. Like there is again that this indication that God is speaking to somebody else within himself about making creating things only God can create right but why is God saying let us make man in our image for me that indicates again that's only this is only one place where this is indicated okay but it indicates that God is more than just one okay in, and I'm not saying that there's more than one God I'm saying there's well, one you're God kind of saying that, but I, you know I am saying God is I am saying that God that indicates the triune God that we believe in. I don't believe in three gods, I believe in one God, but he is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That is partly why I believe that, because it's indicated in the Word of God that I claim to be the Word of God. Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. We are one, but three. Yeah, so that's where we where we okay, can indicate. Respond? Yeah, please do. I right, think it's okay. time for you to go and ask the call of nature. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to, I want to, I, I really need the toilet, but I'll wait. Okay, uh, okay, we can conclude on this if you wish. Right, please. now, Arabic yes. and Hebrew are Semitic languages, okay. right? They are Semitic languages. Mm -hmm. So what you will find is that there are some words Right, that have similarities. Yeah. Right, I'll give an example. In the Quran, Allah says, um, I'll recite in Arabic. It says, um, Verily, Verily, we have created man, right? And we know what Himself whispers to Him. The word, Arabic word, we know, right? Allah used the word we here. No, the word nahnu means we. We know what his what himself whispers. Right? Another verse in the Quran, Allah says, Nahnu We have created. Right? Now let's go to the reason why I mentioned this Arabic. Because the word nahnu means we, but it's not describing a plurality. It's describing a royalty. And I'll give you an example. You know the queen of this country, right? When she addresses her royal courtier, when she's making an, an address, does she, does she address herself in a singular plural 
or in the plural form? When she speaks on behalf of the government, she speaks in plural. Thank you very much. She probably has the government. Thank you. You're, you're just making my point. Yeah. She probably addresses them on behalf of her royalty. So this, right. not just her, but this. Does she use the we or does she use I? I'm not sure. She uses I normally. She can use both. No, no, she can use both. But in most cases, she uses the word we. But does it mean that there's more than one of her speaking? Hold on one second. Speaking on behalf of the government. There you go. I, I agree with you. It's we, meaning me and I agree with you. Thank you. Me and my government. God bless you. You're making my point. Thank you very much. You're actually helping me. Thank you. So when, so, so when the word we is used here, right? God is making an address of his singularity and I'll prove that to you from the Hebrew language itself. Okay. If we go to Genesis well, chapter... I'm, I'm not going to cut in, I'm gonna, I want you to answer, but I want to say this is, remember this is one of the last hour we've talked about many verses yeah. indicating where, where indicating that that God is part of a triune. Like like many, and you've, you've argued and you've provided um, a, um, a response, I would say, not a debate, to each one. But I'm telling you that we can go there and go there and go there. Okay, go on, respond. Okay, okay, right. If we go to Genesis chapter 1, yeah. verse 1, yeah. it says, Barashid, bara Elohim, is a shemayim it's in Hebrew. It says, in the beginning, God, the word, the, the Hebrew word used here, right, is Elohim. But how did the translators translate Elohim? In a singular. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're proving my point. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, man. You're proving my point every single time. Because God is three in one. That's why. God is three in one. We're going to debunk that just now. God is plural and yet one. We're going to debunk that just now. Right. So, I provided. The Arabic context, and I'm going to provide, because I said to you in the beginning, Arabic and Hebrew are Semitic languages, similar, right? Yeah. They're very similar, like Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic. So the word for God in Aramaic, in Aramaic is Eloha, right? Eloha, which is similar to Arabic, which is Allah. That's why, if you notice in the book of Matthew, if that's, right, it, it's, it's not L. It's not L. L is Hebrew. We're talking about Aramaic. Okay. Aramaic, Arabic and Hebrew are Semitic languages. So therefore you will find similarities. Yeah? So now let's go. I would rather this than that. Yes. I know. There's a lot of there's a lot of clowning around there. Right. So going back to Genesis 120. The reason why I brought that up because I'm I'm trying to provide a background, right? From a from from a linguistic point of view. Right? So let's go to Genesis 126. When God created, when he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, could you care to read verse 27? Of the same chapter? Of the same chapter. let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. Because he used the singular. I'm learning. <laughs> I'll be watching you too. Yeah, so, so my question, going back to John 17, no, no, no. so about duality, if, if, if it's well, singular, why, 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 which goes to my point, which goes back to my point thing. that I was saying over there. Oh, right. so, so, yeah, yeah. Hold on, you're going to read in 27, yeah? Or bring what he's asking. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Stop there. Male and female, okay. he created them. Right. So, so, so hold on, one second. So God created man in whose image? His own image. Right. Yes. His image. Yes, right. Does it say that? Okay, now hold on one second. No, no, hold on. I don't think you're getting the point here. No, I am. But it just adds to this ongoing dialogue that we could, right. we, we could have forever. No, we can have this. No, I, I, I enjoy dialogues like this. I think it's meaningful. Yes, but right. exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, no, but exactly. God is one, but he's more than one in unity. I, I, that's what I'm getting from. Okay. 
It says God created man in his kidney. Yeah, it's not Trinity. Yeah, okay. So that's what I'm thinking. This is proof. Right. Let, let me, let me, okay. It just let me, makes it even more of an ambiguous thing of like, how many Moses, who is this God and what, does, what is he like? Is there more than one Moses? There's only one Moses. So why no, do you actually, say, there's loads of Moses. There's no. only one yeah. actual Moses. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And it, I agree. In the Old Testament, yeah, 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 yeah. in the Old Testament, yeah. Is there one Moses or there's more than one Moses? There's probably loads of Moses, but there's one that we, we know. That we know. Prophet Moses. Prophet Moses. Yeah. So yeah. why Prophet does it Moses, say, yeah. why does it say in Exodus 7 verse 1, that I shall make you an Elohim unto Pharaoh if there's only one Moses? Provide an uh, answer linguistically for me. Please. No, I'm waiting on your response. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Fair okay, yeah. fine. That's the reason. That's the reason why, when God says, "Let us make man in our image," just the same way where Abraham, where Moses is called Elohim, and there's not more than one, one more than Moses. We know there's only one Moses, right? So the word "us make man," God is speaking as a clue of respect. He is not speaking no, as no respect. No. I, and I'll tell you why. I'll That's tell you. No, do you know? Do you know? No, do you know why I believe this? Because I am. No, 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 no. I am not super. If you notice, I am not super, imp super imposing the Quran onto this. I'm bringing the Bible itself as an evidence. I'm bringing the language as an evidence. I haven't even touched the Quran as yet. I can go there if you want, but I'm not touching the Quran. Not today. I've, I that's fine. <laughs> I've, I've only touched. I've only touched the gospel itself. I have read the Quran. Interestingly right. So what I'm saying is that in Genesis 1:26, when it said, "Let us," God is not speaking that He's a multiplicity because that makes you a polytheist. Yeah. And you just said to me earlier that you're not a polytheist. Are you? I'm not a polytheist. There you go. No, I'm not a I rest. Okay, yeah. I don't believe in all these. I rest my case. Okay, listen. Christians don't believe in many gods. Like, we don't believe in, in thousands of gods, like the Hindu religion believe. Okay, we believe in one god of three, three persons. Okay. Three persons. Sorry, so let's discuss this. And you know. Um, so the father's. The father. No, I don't. Listen, I take your okay. response. I'm not. Like, I genuinely need to use the restroom, like, desperately. No, no, go ahead. Listen, like, um. Like, I just want to talk to you off the cameras. Like, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, is that okay? Shall I finish? Okay. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to have to take these off. Yeah. No, not, in, not in a debate. I just want to talk to you on a personal level. That's fine. No, is that okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll excuse myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. The sister wants to speak to me off camera. Yes. So may Allah, yeah, may Allah, may Allah bless you. Yeah? yeah? Okay. That's that's what I like. I like respect for discussions. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.